In classic fashion, the Chicago Bulls beat the Milwaukee Bucks 133-122 to in a game where we did not expect the Bulls to get the victory. Part of the reason they did get the victory is because they played team defense, they hit the three-point shot, and we saw an efficient game from Zach Levine. We're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about Giannis being Giannis, Patrick Williams looking aggressive, and the rest of the team making strides in ways that we saw positive outcome through this game. We're going to do all that and more, but first, you got to hear the intro. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast. Bulls fans, welcome back to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. My name is Quentin. I'm your host. And as usual, if you like the channel, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. Let's get right into it. The Chicago Bulls found a way to pull out a victory against the Milwaukee Bucks, a game where we're going against a rival and we all did not expect them to play the way they did. This game showed that the Bulls actually can play team defense. They're starting to understand how to cover for each other. When they're starting to play certain players, they're taking them and playing a certain type of defense on that specific player, as well as trying to shut down superstars. This is what you want from your team. We saw through this game, honestly, Giannis was Giannis. He did what he's going to do. It's hard to stop him. But we saw the Bulls implementing some things that really helped them get the victory this game. One of those things was Patrick Williams. Honestly, I think Patrick Williams might be becoming the Giannis stopper. And now that he's put on the extra weight and strength this offseason, it seemed like he was having an easier time trying to stop Giannis from getting to the rim. Also, the Bulls started to implement fronting Giannis in the post instead of letting him get good position. Not only were they also fronting Giannis, they also had a back person coming up to catch him when he did have someone lob the ball into the paint. These are the things you want to see the Bulls do. Smart defensive plays, covering for your other man, helping out as a team. Now with that, Giannis is Giannis, right? So you didn't do much to stop him from scoring. 38 points from the Bucks superstar. But the good thing is he shot 15 from 23. And some of those shots that he did hit were mid-range shots. And they're mid-range shots that you would give him on a gamely basis, right? It's one of those shots where you go, hey, if you hit it, you hit it, but I'm making you shoot that instead of letting you go to the rim. He also got an amazing dunk on Vooch where we're probably not going to talk about it much because I feel bad for Vooch and everything he's going to go through, especially having to watch that over and over for probably the next week because it was a pretty monster dunk that happened. Now, I'll also talk about Damian Lillard. 28 points, he scored the ball, but it seemed like he was trying a lot to score the ball. So 11 for 21 for Dame. 3 for 12 from the three-point line. The Bulls were stopping him from getting to his spots at the three and making him work harder than needed. And that's what you want to see. You don't need to stop the superstar of the other team. You don't need to make them have zero points. But you do have to slow them down and make it difficult for every single shot they take. Now, doing that helped the Bulls stay in this game. Now, what helped them win the game was some extraordinary movements by certain players. So we're going to start talking about the Bulls stats and what they did. The first person I want to talk about is Zach Levine. Zach Levine continued to play efficiently, right? He's playing smart. He's taking good shots, doing it within the flow of the offense, and he's not worried about what's going to happen with his other team. That's what you want to see. You don't have to force it, right? If your teammates give you the ball and you're open, take the shot. If you don't have the shot, find someone else. And he seems like he's starting to understand that. The more he does, the more efficient he gets. The more efficient he gets, the better his trade value. So seeing him have another game like this is super amazing, right? 25 points, 5 rebounds, 9 for 15 from the field, 2 for 6 from the 3-point line, 5 for 6 from the free throw line. So he's getting fouled, he's attacking the rim, and he's trying to score when he has a good opportunity. We also saw Kobe White having another amazing game. This looked like the Kobe White from last year, right? The first game, he stumbled. He didn't look good. He couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. This game, he said, do not forget who I am. 35 points for Kobe White, 6 rebounds, 
five assists, 12 for 20, seven for 13 from the three-point line, four for four from the free throw line. He was shooting the ball and shooting confidently, right? Kobe's starting to understand he has to slow down. He has to let the game come to him and don't force shots. If you're missing, that's okay. Shoot the next one with confidence you're going to hit. You're too good of a scorer not to continue to take good shots, right? We also saw a great game from Vooch, 22 and 10. That is a Vooch night. He does what he needs to do. But the surprising fact was Vooch hitting four threes, four for nine from the three-point line. The Bulls were just shooting this game, right? Throwing them up. And to see Vooch hit consistently is something that's good as a Bulls fan, but it also scares you a little bit because he might continue to try to shoot that way the rest of the year. And there's no telling if he's going to be consistent or if he's going to drop back down and miss six in the game. So I'm happy to see him hit the game this time. But next game, I need you back in the post. Start it all over again. And don't shoot until you feel like you can hit a couple. Josh Giddy did his thing. 17 points, six rebounds, nine assists, six for 10 from the field, two for two from the um, three-point line. And not only two for two from the three-point line, he hit one of the biggest shots of the game, pulling up with confidence in the corner. That is a great sign. Seeing Josh Giddy hit three-point shots, get his teammates involved, hit people back cutting. There was a great move where he hit Zach with a back cut. Perfect pass to give Jack the dunk. That is what you want to see in your point guard. If he can continue to hit the three-point shot efficiently, he doesn't have to shoot 50%. But if he can hit 37 38% from the field, when it comes to threes, that is a blessing for the Chicago Bulls. Last from the starters, I got to give a shout out. We've been calling for it. We've been dogging this man over and over again. But Patrick Williams looked like he was ready to play. 13 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 5 for 11 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3-point line. And he was shooting confidently. There was no hesitation. There were times where I didn't want Pat to shoot, and he took the shot. And that's something that's actually good to see as a Bulls fan, right? It's crazy. He took some shots that weren't in the flow. He did the, he did the opposite of what we want Zach to do. And that's even if it's a bad shot, sometimes he needs to just shoot it to show that he's willing to. You also saw him active on the court, right? He was playing good defense. He seemed like he was in the game because he was guarding Giannis. Making good moves on Giannis made him feel like he was a part of the team, and that got him active on the offensive end, right? He wasn't just standing in the corner and shooting. He was attacking the rim, going for, you know, floaters, going for jump shots in the mid-range, going for fades, trying to get rebounds and go back up. That is the pat we want to see. You don't have to be a superstar, but you just have to be moving around the court, be active and try to get the ball in the net. If you can do that, you will score. You're too strong, too fast, too athletic to not average at least 12 points a game, right? So seeing 13 points a game is great for him. Talking about the bench, there wasn't a lot of bench action. Our bench mostly played good defense. They didn't need the offense as much, which is good. I would assume with two points, five rebounds, five assists. Julian Phillips, three points, two rebounds. Smith? Smith showed he could shoot again, right? 40% shooter last year. He's starting to look like he's comfortable taking the shot again. 11 points, 5 rebounds, 4 for 9 from the field, 3 for 5 from the three-point line. Once again, taking confident shots. Dale and Terry, 3 for, uh, sorry, 3 points, 2 rebounds, 1 assist, but he was active, right? Didn't have a lot of minutes, but was moving around, getting around the court, doing what he had to do. And last, Buzelis, modest, 2 points, Two assists. The only time he hit a shot was the one time the Bulls didn't make him a corner shooter. Now, I thought this game was great. I thought the Bulls played good defense. I thought they were getting the ball moving. There were some bad turnovers, but they, they handled the ball pretty decently throughout the game. The only issue I had about this game was forcing Modest to just be a catch-and-shoot player. I need Billy to understand Modest can do more. The G League Ignite had him running the offense a lot of the time. He knows how to handle the ball. He can bring it up the court. He can make some moves. He can dribble. He can make decisions. You can't just do what you did to Lori. You can't stick him in a corner and go, hey, we're going to pass you the ball and just sit here and shoot threes. That's not his game. And that shows. The one time he picked the ball up and dribbled, yeah, it was a little flimsy, but he hit a nice little fade. 
because he has it in his game. Okay, you got to give him the ball. You got to give him minutes. Let him go learn to do what he needs to do. Build that confidence to show that he can play against NBA stars. Now, the Bulls played great. The Bucks played good, just not good enough. But as a Bulls fan, I am always happy when we built beat Milwaukee. This is one of those things that make you happy. Hey, even if we don't <laughs> just lose every game, I do like seeing the Bulls beat good teams, right? It shows that the young people are progressing. They're learning to handle big moments, hitting big shots in big moments. And that's something that you can take to next year when you're really starting to build this team and understand the culture that you've made over the year. Now, if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, make sure you comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the game and what you thought on the players' games. Who was your favorite player from this game? I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. We're going to keep dropping it. Also, don't forget to check me out on Chi-Town Sports Central every day. We're dropping those videos. I'm now officially a co-host over there. So check out the videos. Me, Big Kev, Steve-O, we're killing over there, dropping content for you, talking about Chicago sports. So make sure you tune in and keep tuning into my videos and letting me know how much you guys enjoy it. So I hope you all have a great time. I will see you tomorrow's game. Peace. Thank you for watching. 